Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Building a Nation with Team Canada and today we have for you the three quarter season update for the 2023 Major League Soccer regular season. That's a mouthful but uh, you know what we got a lot more than that going on today. We also have a whole whole ton of things that are going on with the national team. Take a look at the calendar. You see here we just had our Olympic qualifying draw. We're in the semifinals, of course. That's where it starts out. So at least where we start out at. Anyway, we got that going on. We got the under-20s have a friendly. We got the Nations League squad getting ready to be announced. We got a ton of things to go over. So I think what I'll do is I'll go over that stuff. And then we'll play a game, and then we'll do the three-quarter season update just to sort of break things up a little bit. How does that sound? Sure. So let's switch to the national team for a minute. So we haven't called up any teams yet, but I'm starting to put the plans in place. You know, I'm starting to look at the guys on our team on Vancouver that we need to get match fit and need to get a bunch of playing time between now and the end of the year. Because as I mentioned, the schedule is about to get pretty crazy. So we got Nations League. We got two two matches, two, not matches, but two batches of Nations League game. In between, we've got the Confederations Cup playoff, which if... Uh, I think I mentioned this last video, but the Confederations Cup doesn't exist anymore. It's been uh, disbanded and replaced with the Club World Cup, at least d replaced on the schedule. So this doesn't really exist anymore, but you know what? We're going to play in it anyway, and we're going to play off against USA to get to join the Confederations Cup. So I guess it's the last two winners of the Gold Cup will play off against each other to get into the Confederations Cup. Interesting, but it's another competition for our senior team to play in. So, I mean, that can't be bad, right? Maybe we'll have to throw a B team into the Confederations Cup or maybe a B team into this Nations League. Either way, I don't know. Because, I mean, we can get past Trinidad and Haiti with a B team, no problem. But... The, um, the Nations League is very important to us this year. It's a competition we have to win if we want to keep our job, or at least we have to you know, satisfy the board if we want to keep our job. Now, also the under-23s, they have to get ready for the Olympic qualifying, and we are in Group B with Costa Rica, Honduras, and the USA. So that's a tough group, but it's not necessarily the toughest group, I think. Group A, at least, has Mexico and Jamaica. So they've got the two, I think, toughest teams in the, in the competition in one group. Although our group, I think, overall is a little tougher. I think we've got four very competitive teams in there, whereas Trinidad and Guatemala maybe aren't quite as competitive as, say, Costa Rica and Honduras. I think USA, you could say, maybe... Well, no, they're not really a matchup for Mexico. They seem to, well, they've beaten them at least once. So, you know, it's just four tough teams. And uh, the thing about this North American qualifying is there are no weak teams. Uh, you know, they're all pretty good teams. Just to get in this position, you have to be a pretty good team. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be difficult. We won this last time around. Try and win it again. We're not going to have quite as big of superstars on this team for their under 23s but we will i think have a very strong and balanced team this time around um so i've got to get a bunch of under 23s from vancouver ready to play so they're going to have to play in the next few games and that's that's going to be interesting um so i've got to balance the schedule between you know senior team players who have to be fit but also rested and then under-23 team players who need experience and, and definitely need to be fit. And then we also got the under-20s. You know, they got a couple of international, couple of friendlies. Those will be, you know, secondary on the list. Just whoever, whoever can make it in the under-20s, that's fine. But we're going to put most of our focus into the under-23s and the senior team. 
So that's how that is going to go. So we'll look at the schedule for today, not for the national team, but we're going to play a game here in MLS because normally 27 games is where I put the three-quarter season mark. So that gives us seven games to go. So we're, we've got 26 games right now. We're a couple games behind everybody else in the league. So after we play this game, then we can look at the, the league table and the stats and all that stuff. So get to the schedule and here we are we've been playing well we've been on a great streak recently but this is now the post norman economy that we're living in norman was traded away well not traded away he was bought out from underneath us back here in uh, in between these two canadian championship games so it's been about a month without him we managed to beat toronto for the canadian championship without him had a draw against Colorado. So now we're going to get into the final quarter of the season. Got an interesting schedule. Minnesota, you know, a lot of Western Conference teams. Minnesota, Real Salt Lake, Houston, Sporting KC, Seattle, Dallas. And then we've got a couple of Eastern Conference teams. Columbus, and of course we end out the year with our big rivals, Toronto FC, who we've already beaten twice this year, at least twice this year, if not a thousand times. Anyway. Let's get to the match preview against Minnesota, a team we don't look at very often. So we'll take a little time and look at Minnesota. Adrian Heath is the head coach. Englishman. Came over from Coventry back in 2007 as the interim head coach. To Austin Azteca, now Orlando City. How's that for history? Uh, and then... He stuck with Orlando City all the way up until 2016. And since then, he's been in Minnesota. How about that for a, uh, a very sort of stable career? Now, he's not what I would call the greatest coach. He's just sort of very average. He is not a motivator. Wow, that is awful. That's the worst motivating I've ever seen for a head coach. One, interesting. He's a decent judge of player, decent technical type coach but you know he must be a heck of a guy because Orlando stuck with him for a long time and Minnesota stuck with him for a long time as well so yeah that's Adrian Heath for you <laughs> Minnesota meanwhile we'll take a look at Minnesota I always I, I almost want to call them the Golden Gophers but no they are the loons you know, it looks like they've got a pretty decent squad. A lot of, uh, you know, four-star, three-and-a-half-star guys. Romero, Romario Ibarra up top is definitely a guy we have to look out for. Valued at $7 million. Looks like they've got a pretty decent roster. Oh, there's a blow for them. They went out, they got Lucho Acosta, and he's injured. Where did they get Lucho from? How did they acquire him via a trade this year? So that's that hurts. Well, he's got 26 appearances, so he played a good amount of time. Six goals, five assists, 7.1 rating. So they're going to miss Acosta for sure. That is a big blow to their roster. Is he a designated player? He is not, but he's still got to be one of their better players. So... Too bad for Minnesota. What does their schedule look like? Man, it looks like they had a little bit of trouble early in the season there, in April particularly. Not so good. We beat them 5-0 back in April. Ouch, that started a spiral for them for sure. But they bounced back a little bit later. They got to the fifth round of the U.S. Cup, knocked out in the quarterfinals by Orlando City. And they've been on a fairly poor run recently. And now they run back into the buzzsaw that is Vancouver. We'll see if they're out for revenge or not. Anyway, we are 6-4 to four favorites playing at Alliance Field, Allianz Field in Minnesota, St. Paul. Their brand new stadium out there. 18,426 tickets sold out of 19,400 capacity. Uncle Ted... Will be the referee. You know he's he's refed a lot of car a lot of games, 
And, uh, you know, 3.4 yellows per match is a bit high. We'll see about that. We'll see how old Uncle Ted treats us today. Let's get on with the match. So, we're going with the Z formation as, as usual. And the theory, well, not the theory, but the, uh, the reason behind this lineup that we're about to show you is we want to get as many of national team players in there as possible. So, we've got Pantami in goal, Zlatkovic on the left, Ahmed on the right, Dunn and Jaguer, Jackson Amell and Tebert in the midfield. Tebert will, it's questionable whether he'll make the, make the national team lineup this time around. I don't know that we need a lot of veterans going into uh, the current Nations League, or at least our opponents this time around. We don't necess necessarily need a lot of veterans to beat them. Uh, so he might not make the squad. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Timoteo on the left. Ross on the right. Our number one draft pick. Six assists on the year. Pretty good. Shamit Shom in the middle. And Darren Sr. up top, our leading goal scorer. 17 goals in 20 appearances. They've got Marila in goal. Orino James. Who's this guy? Manuel James. Four appearances for the... Uh, Colombian national team. Interesting. 1.1 million from Junior in Colombia last year. So, interesting. Arigen has made all his way all the way from Colombia to MLS. They've got Long and Slater in the midfield. There's Ibarra on the left. Highest average rating and most assists. Seven goals, eight assists, 7.16 rating. He's played very well. Jordan Morris has moved over to Minnesota. This happens quite a bit, I've noticed. Several, several times in MLS saves that I've played, Jordan Morris goes to Minnesota. I don't know what it is. I don't know why, but yet it happens over and over. He's got eight goals in 17 appearances, top goal scorer. they got Ruben up top, six goals, five assists, 26 appearances. Davis in the middle. 15 times off the bench, 11 starts, one goal, one assist. Okay. Interesting lineup. Let's go. Pep Talk, we're the favorites. Go out there and show them why. Why. Uh, let's see. Slater, sure. We'll press him. Looks like... S I can't tell. Is Slater going forward or is Long dropping back? We'll figure that out later. We definitely want to tightly mark Morris. There's no question about that. Press against the youngster Terry Davis. I think that's it. Let's get to the kickoff. All right. Here we go. National Anthems. Oh, no. This is why I hate playing Minnesota. This is why I don't put a lot of Minnesota games up on the channel it's because our our uniforms are too similar i don't know why we always wear this gray when we play minnesota why don't we wear our whites that would make a lot more sense against minnesota's gray so we're sort of we're sort of graphite gray maybe i don't know i guess that's i guess that's more of a blue it's like the dress is this gray or blue gray or blue i think it's blue Anyway, it looks too similar to Minnesota, especially especially when it's out on the field. Although we're getting no highlights, so maybe that's maybe that's good. Maybe, you know, less highlights is better so we don't have to look at those non-clashing uniforms. We do have 7 shots 3 on target. You'd think some of those would make the highlight reel, but I guess not. 63% possession, we're killing them. 65% possession. You know, Things are going well. We just can't see any of the action, unfortunately. Arino, yellow card. Okay. 30 minutes. 30 minutes down. No highlights as of yet. Okay. So it'll be interesting to see this, this round of, of national team games. We've got a lot riding on some of these competitions. If we're going to make the next... Olympics, we got to win the Olympic trials. If we're going to keep our job, we've got to do very well in the Nations League. So that's why I'm, I'm sort of torn right now on what sort of team to bring up. 
Because our veterans failed us in the Gold Cup. We had a pretty veteran team. Uh-oh, here we go. We finally get a highlight. 45 minutes in. One minute of extra time. Zlatkovic with a yellow card. Wins it over Morris. But he retains possession. Sends one across. Ahmed does not cover Ibarra. Sends it to Ruben. Okay, off the goalpost. Ahmed forced to clear it up. And that ends the half on a very risky play. We do have Pantami in goal. You know, just to make sure that he stays fit for the national team. Uh, we haven't traded anybody away. It's just, you know, we're, we're just making sure Pantami is fit. That's all. Um, is there any analysis we can look at? Slatkovic has been booked. Okay, I mean, other than that. Other than that, I don't know what to do. Um, uh, you know, we could go more attacking. We could go, you know, less possession, but we're dominating in possession. We're just not scoring goals right now. So let's get to the dressing room pep talk. Let's be assertive. Um, time to dig in and get what we deserve. Okay. I think the one tactical move I might want to make. Right now, Senior's a pressing forward. I think I'll put him target man on attack and see what that does. Because he's scoring a lot of goals as a target man. Um, you know, in our other formations. So maybe that's the secret. Target man is the secret. And then I also wanted to do what they said here. Slatkovic, ease off tackles, Ibarra. Okay, Ahmed is, needs to ease off. Ibarra, okay, we'll mark him. Uh-oh, something happened. No, offside. Offside. Yep, the ref is going to the VAR. Ref, clear offside. All right, here we go. So he's on a corner, of course. And there he is. I guess. Hard to tell who's who. I still don't know who's who. We're, I believe we're in the darker jerseys, and they're in the lighter jerseys. But other than that, it looks like a scrimmage going on. It looks like an intra-squad scrimmage. Here we go. Tebert to senior. Uh, we got a man way a 1,000 yards offside. Please get onside. Thank you. Slatkovic sends one in to senior. He gets the header, and he follows. Oh, what a stop. I thought he was going to follow that up for an easy goal. Marilla makes the save. Tebert, though, comes back with a corner. Lang, long, I mean, heads it out. Ross keeps it in. Ross chips it across. Okay, Shamit Shom's going to gather it in. Back to Ross. Oh, Jackson is going to take the shot just wide. Come on, boys. Let's give him... You know what they... You know what these guys like? These guys like a good old-fashioned get creative. There we go. See, look at that. They're inspired. Let's go. Let's make something happen. You know, on the other hand, we could also change the team instructions. We've been playing disciplined for, like, five years. So maybe we could, uh, you know, give them a break. All right. Uh, I think we will get Ahmed out of there. Bring in Mark Thomas. Get one of those yellow cards out. Ahmed is playing poorly. 6.5, he's got a yellow card. He is inspired right now, but we're going to get him out of there anyway. Senior's not playing very well. Could get him out of there. I don't know that this is necessarily his formation to be playing up top. I think he prefers to play on the wing when we go to the Z formation. 71 minutes. All right, pause it there. I'm going to make these subs. We're going to move Senior to the right for Ross. Put him on attack. And then I'm going to bring in Pantaleone up top and put him as a poacher. Because I think a poacher is is better for this, this offense. The Z formation, they try to work it in the box. So it's better if you've got a poacher who's waiting there to like you know break the back line. It's my theory anyway. It doesn't always work. In fact, it rarely works. But it's still my theory, and I'm still holding to it. 
All right, Morris comes off. Let's pause again. Opposition instructions. Got to do our due diligence here. Terry Davis moved down to the midfield. They brought in Zion Jones and Juan Manuel Valencia. Why is that name familiar? 25-year-old Colombian. Two under 20 caps. Maybe we played against this guy. He's got like a real beret-looking hairstyle there. I'm not sure I'm a fan of that, but 16 long shots. I'm definitely not a fan of that. All right. Get out of here. All right, play. This has been the worst game in history of, of football. They switched to a 4-2-4, four, four, I guess. Long and Davis in the midfield. Valencia and Ruben up top. 86 minutes. Don't necessarily know that there's any other substitutes we need to make. 90 minutes. It's too late now. Timoteo's looking exhausted, but he's only got to be in there for another minute. Here we go. Throw in Zlatkovic to Shemit Shom. Nope. Intercepted by Long. Sent downfield. Dunn clears it up. Sends it back. Do we get an do we get a last minute goal? That would be brutal for these Minnesota fans to go through. No, I don't think so. 30 seconds overdue in terms of extra time. Ibarra takes a charge downfield and it is for naught. Okay, well, sorry about that. That was like the worst game possible. Pep talk. Um, simply put, not good enough. We should have won that. We should have beat Minnesota. What I don't want to do is I don't want to go back to the draws that we were having early in the season. So we might have to go back to, you know, the number two formation and see if we can start generating some more goals. That will throw my, that will throw my, uh, preparations a little bit out of whack in terms of, of preparing for the national team, but still. Um, we might have to do it for the good of the club. We can't sacrifice everything within the club for the national team. Now let's take a look at the competitions and see where we're at. So after 27 games, we got 14 wins, 11 draws, only two losses on the entire season, 53 points, and a plus 26 goal differential. We're definitely... Winning the Western Conference, you know, but Houston is right behind us at 51 points. It's just our goal differentials are vastly different. They've only got a plus 11, so it looks like we've, it looks like we should be doing better, but we've got all those dang draws, and that's what's keeping us down a little bit. And it's got us third in the Supporters Shield, four points behind Atlanta United. And a whopping nine points behind New York Red Bull. Although they do have, both those teams have two games over us. So, you know, it's a little closer than it looks. But still, we have to be perfect going forward if we're going to want to, if we're going to catch up to New York. They've just, uh, they leapt out in front of the league. The rest of the league is sort of catching up to them, but still got a ways to go. As for the Canadian teams, Toronto has dropped to 5th, Montreal has dropped to 6th, but they're still looking pretty good. Both of them at 49 points. Both will most likely break the 50-point barrier. So we're going to have three Canadian teams breaking the 50-point barrier this year. That's going to be pretty good. Take a look at the team stats for the year. New York, of course, number one in goals, 55 goals on the season. But look who's number two. Vancouver with 50 goals. That last game didn't help us out at all. But, you know, we're still up there second in the league. Atlanta United, New England. So the East Coast teams are scoring quite a bit. Maybe not so much the West Coast. Houston, I guess they're tied with everybody else. Everybody's got 43 goals, so that's not too bad. Most headers completed. New England, number one. Good for them. They're tall, probably. Best possession, though, New England there as well. So that's an interesting combination. Toronto FC, second in the league in possession. And here we are, fourth in the league. Not, not too bad. You know, it's uh, 
We've played a lot of possession style this year, and it has definitely worked, and it's definitely paid off. So fourth in the league, we'll take that for sure. Tackles won. Orlando City, 90% of their tackles won. We're not on this list. No, no, we are on this list. We're second. What am I, what am I talking about? I have no idea. 89%. I was just used to us being at the top, and when we weren't at the top, I just figured we weren't on the list at all for some reason. Anyway, 89%. It's pretty good. Um, we've been a good tackling team forever, and we continue that now. Least conceded this is where we've taken a big jump over last year 24 goals allowed out of 27 matches that's darn good i don't care who you are that's pretty good toronto fc second with only 25 goals allowed so both interestingly both teams have national team goalkeepers <laughs> although pantomie isn't necessarily uh the guy who's responsible for all these shutouts montreal fourth in the league only 28 goals houston 32 goals, so Houston, good offense, good defense. Seems to be a trend with all these top teams. New York, though, a little bit down there in terms of, I mean, I guess they're tied for fifth in the league, not so bad. First in goals, fifth in goals allowed is pretty decent. Anytime you look at it, Atlanta United, number one in shutouts. It seems like they're number one in shutouts every year. 14 on the season. We're right behind them in second place with 13. New York, Montreal, Houston, Teams to be expected up there. Most fouls were not on the list. So we're tackling well. Tackling cleanly. Houston second in the league in fouls. Minnesota first in the league in fouls. 420 fouls in 29 matches. That seems a bit harsh. Most passes completed. Look at that. We're up on the list. 79%. So that again, that goes along with our possession style. San Jose up top. New England, LAFC. There's Toronto fifth place. Atlanta 6th. Okay. Crosses. Chicago, number 1 at 18%. We're down at 16%. 6th in the league. That's fine. For what we do, 16% is fine, I guess. Hitting the target. This is where, again, I wish we were better. But when you're going with a whole bunch of young strikers, this is going to be a problem. You know, we, you need veterans shooting the ball if you're going to get your percentage up there. And we are not. Montreal, however, 52%. Small percentage point behind Colorado at the top of the league. Other than that, you know, a bunch of teams we don't particularly care too much about. D.C. United, Portland. I mean, Portland's one of our rivals, but eh. New England, yeah, it's fine. So, you know, a lot of interesting stats there. Can we look at maybe player stats real quick? We haven't looked at player stats in a while for the league. Alessand Alessandro Rossi for Houston. Top goal scorer in the league at 19. And look who's third. Darren Sr. with 14 league goals on the season. Outstanding. It's been a long time since we've had anybody at the top of this list. So that's very, very cool. Very happy for him. Most assists. Venuto from none other than Vancouver. Third place with eight assists. Medina and Savarino. Up top with nine assists on the season. Tied for first. Jordan Faria, who we traded to Montreal. Eight assists. So that's definitely what we want to see. Um, Johnny Russell still playing at age 33. Eight assists on the season. Good for him. Distance run. Tomas Martinez for Houston. Still running around at age 28 years old. Pablo Torres. We don't have anybody on the list. A lot of guys from Houston, though. There's Albert Elise. 8.21 miles, fourth place. Good for them. Most tackles. Hedry from Philadelphia. Scottman, Scott from Scotland. 28 years old. 10 tackles. Mensa Mori Manuel from FC Dallas. Okay. None of our guys on this list, surprisingly. Least conceded. There's our guy. Luke McGee. Only 13 goals allowed in 20 appearances. So, yeah, he's been the dude who's been uh, holding it down for us. And hopefully in a few years, he will be the national team goalkeeper for Team Canada. He has taken Canadian citizenship because he has said that I think, uh, you know, I think I can be Team Canada goalkeeper. Must live in the country for at least five years after the age of 18. So he's got 548 days to go. 
little less than two years and he will be eligible so hopefully that puts him just in time for world cup to get in there we shall see um it's going to be an interesting race to see who see if uh, he can get in before the World Cup. Anyway, Alex Bono up there, as we saw, only 17 goals allowed. Alfred Gomis from Houston, 14 allowed. So some pretty good goalkeepers in the league this year. There's our old friend Zach McMath, still playing for RSL. 27 goals allowed, so he's still playing well. Jean from Montreal. 28. Okay, it's fine. Uh, most shutouts, of course. McGee, 12 shutouts. Tied with Inafente and Walter from New York. Gomez with fourth. Gene tied with him. Zach McMath. So, yeah, the names you would expect are all there. Tackles. We don't have anybody on the list. Juan Romeo is up there. Rometty. Liam Frazier. There's a Canadian on the list. 25 years old. Midfielder playing for Philadelphia. That's good. I don't know that he's going to be called up to any national teams anytime soon or ever. He's just not good enough, but he's he's okay. Uh, yeah. Kellen Acosta is up there. 4.35 tackles. Most dribbles. Venuto. I've never had a player on this list before. But Venuto, I guess, is dribbling his little heart out. Albert Elise is up there. Martinez from Atlanta United. Is fine. Vaco from San Jose. Okay. Most key passes. Diego Rossi playing for Philadelphia now. 25 years old. No longer at LAFC. That's an interesting move out to the East Coast. Lucho Acosta. We looked at him. He's not going to get any more assists. He is out. Johnny Russell. Okay. Best at hitting the target. There we go. Timoteo. So we got one guy who's good at hitting the target. 66%. 17 appearances, 5 goals. Everybody else on the team apparently is terrible. Okay, there we go. There's the stats. Uh, we didn't really have any transfers to look at or worry about. We don't really have like board or finance problems or anything interesting to talk about. So I kind of think that's it. We'll keep it as a short episode because we got a lot of Canadian team stuff coming up. So that's going to do it. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.